Hi, my name is Bente, I'm the Norris Witch and today let's talk about the Norris Goddess Frick. Yes, finally another Norris Gods or Norris Goddesses video. If you like them, then give the video a thumbs up so I know that I should make more of them. I will talk about first what we know about Frick. What is she all about? Why is she worshipped? What's her deal? <laughs> then I will quickly go into the question of whether Frick and Freya are the same deity and why the question even arises, what we know, what we don't know. After that, I will give you some ideas for possible offerings for her. Then I will go into my experience, which, spoiler alerts, it's pretty slim. But in the end, as always, I will go into my community's experience with Frick because, as always, I asked you if any one of you works with her or worships her or has some kind of closer connection with her and of yes, what your experience is with her, how you kind of view her, how you view her energy, what it feels like. I will go into that as the last part of that video. So make sure to stay because all of your UPG will be at the end of the video. Let's go. So, what do we know about Frigg? First of all, probably everyone knows that she is Odin's wife, of course. She's also the mother of Baldr, Hodr and Hermod. And she's the daughter of Fjörgyn, about whom we don't really know a lot. Frigg resides in Asgard, so she's one of the Aesir. But she has her own hall, which is called Fensalir, the hall in the marshes, which in turn connects her to any kind of wildlife that lives in those areas. Most well known probably the heron, which is connected with her and associated with her a lot of the times. Frigg has a card that's drawn by rams and she also has 12 handmaidens, which sometimes are seen as separate deities. Some of them also appear in other contexts, but some people also see her 12 handmaidens as just aspects of Frigg. I personally see them more as separate, like demi, goddesses, especially because some of them appear in other contexts too. So they seem to not only be handmaidens of Frigg and with that, for me personally, they can't be just aspects of Frigg, but separate goddesses or demi-goddesses or whatever. I don't really think demi-goddesses or demi-gods exist in the Norse pantheon. So for me, they are 12 separate goddesses. First of all, we have Fulla or Fulla. I don't know, debatable. Um, she is, according to Snorri, a virgin with flowing hair and a golden hairband. Uh, she carries Frigg's treasure casket and she looks after her, her footwear, which is like weirdly specific, but okay. <laughs> Next up we have Saga or Sauga, depends. Pronunciations, right? I will just call her Saga because that's what I see most people refer to her as, but I guess in modern Icelandic, in modern Icelandic it would be Sauga or something. Let's just call her Saga, it's easier. Um, <laughs> she has actually her own hall, Sokvabek, which for me personally kind of shows that she's definitely a separate goddess, because why should one aspect of Frigg have her own, her own hall? Um, Sokvabek means the sunken hall, so it seems to be somewhere under the sea. Um, there it is said that she sometimes drinks with Odin from golden cups and they tell each other stories. So apparently they're buddies and hanging out together. Uh, and she apparently knows all of the ancestors and their stories. So maybe if you want to connect with your ancestors and you have, like you, like you struggle with that, maybe connect to Saga first. Next up we have Eir. We don't know that much about Eir apart from the fact that Snorri says that she's an extremely good physician. So she's the physician of the gods. She's also, and that is very interesting, she's also mentioned as one of Odin's maids in a context of Norns. So in that context where she's mentioned as one of Odin's maids, they are uh, referred to as Norns. 
But usually Odin's maids are Valkyries. So is Aid a goddess, a Norn, a Valkyrie, all of the above? Maybe I should make a separate video on that topic because I feel like the whole spirit situation and is someone a god or a Jotun or a Norn or a Valkyrie is extremely complicated and interesting. So I don't know. Tell me in the comments if I should make a separate video on that. Next up, we have someone whose name I can't pronounce. Is it Gevyun? Gevyun? Gebyun? Gebyun? I don't know, <laughs> but her name means giver. And according to Snorri, she welcomes all of the ones who die unmarried. So yay, I guess there we have another kind of afterlife for unmarried people. Maybe she also just welcomes them and then brings them to wherever they will reside after death. Who knows? <laughs> Next up, another complicated name. Sjöfn? Sjöfn? I don't know. <laughs> but um, her name is associated with the word affection. And Snotty says that she kind of directs the minds of people towards love. So she's kind of the, the coupling person <laughs> of the gods. So I don't know, if you are looking for a partner or you want to do some kind of love magic, maybe connect to her. Next up, another complicated name, Loffen or Loppen, I don't know. Um, her name is connected to the words for permission and praise. And she's said to kind of ask Frick and Odin for permission for people who are in love, but their love is forbidden by society. So do we have a queer icon here? Maybe. I mean, love between queer people would definitely have been forbidden. It would have been looked down at at least for gay men. So maybe, I mean, what does it's, it's forbidden by society mean? That's a very vague thing. So maybe we have someone who helps queer people here. Maybe, that would be cool. Next up, finally, someone with an easier name, Sun. Um, she is a guardian. She guards the doors to Fensalir and her name means denial. So, so she's the one who would deny access to people that are not allowed to enter Frick's hall. Next up, Hlin, Klin, however it's pronounced. She's the one who protects the people that Frick wants to save. So apparently Frick doesn't protect people herself. She sends one of her handmaidens. Um, so yeah, cool. Some kind of protection spirit there. Then we have Vor or Var who witnesses oaths and private contracts between people and punishes the ones who break them. So there we have it. If you have an oath or you have some kind of contract with another person, you promise something, don't break it or she will come and punish you. Second to last is Snotra. Her name means kind of lady or bride. Um, and it is a name usually given to people who are wise or self-controlled. So, so she is yeah, said to be wise and courteous and just well-mannered, a good lady, I guess. And lastly, we have Gno, Gna, Gnau, however it's pronounced. Um, she is said to travel over the sky and sea on a horse called Hoof Flourisher. Um, and she's basically Frick's messenger. So she rides on her horse through sky and sea and uh, carries out Frick's messengers. So those are Frick's handmaidens. What else do we know about Frick? Frick, interestingly, also has a falcon dress, just as Freya does. And she can also fly with it, just as Freya does. Interesting, keep that in mind. Frigg is oftentimes seen as some kind of domestic goddess. She's associated with motherhood and with marriage and with like just domestic things in general. I feel like sometimes that part of her is a little bit over accentuated because Frigg is also extremely wise. Frigg is said to know the fate of all beings, yet she says nothing. So she's extremely wise. She has a lot of knowledge. She is a seeress, but she's very, very tactical about it. So it's not like she is seeing and knowing all of these things that are going to happen and she goes around boasting about it and telling people about it. No, she keeps that knowledge to herself and uses it whenever the need arises. And sometimes she even knows more than Odin does. Just seeing her as this domestic motherly goddess, I feel like that really much reduces her to this little thing. But she's so much more like she's 
knowledge and wisdom and tactical thinking like she is so incredibly smart and sometimes knows more and has more wisdom than Odin. But of course, yeah, Frigg is very much connected to like domestic life and things like that. She's also connected to like fiber arts, like spinning or weaving. And she is even mentioned to be spinning the clouds. So let's get into the question whether Frigg and Freya are the same deity or are they separate? What's going on there? As you probably know, there is a lot of overlap between Germanic mythology, Nordic mythology and Anglo-Saxon mythology. And if we look at Germanic and Anglo-Saxon mythology, there is no separation between two deities with these names. In Germanic mythology, we only have one goddess called Freya, whose name probably is derived from the words for woman and beloved one. And in Anglo-Saxon mythology, we only have a goddess named Frigge. So we already see kind of a similarity in the names because with Freya being derived from woman or beloved one, we know that Frigg also comes from beloved one and Freya only means lady. So there's already a kind of similarity. There are also in general a lot of similarities between Frigg and Freya. For example, they are both seeresses. They both have like handmaidens. They both have a falcon dress. There are a lot of things that are very, very similar between these two. And that kind of suggests that they were once one of the same deity, just as they are in Germanic mythology, for example, and Anglo-Saxon mythology, and that they later on split into two separate deities. Why? <laughs> Nobody really knows. I think it's very interesting that, that that's only the case in Nordic mythology, whereas in Anglo-Saxon and Germanic, they were just one deity, but I guess that could be the case because, of course, the Nordic people were pagan for a longer time than the Anglo-Saxons and the Germanic people because those were Christianized a lot earlier. So maybe that was just a natural process, I guess. But why exactly they were split, we don't know. But nowadays, I personally definitely see them as separate deities. I would never try to worship them as one and the same because they are associated with vastly different things and I also kind of feel like their energy is very very different. For example, I see Freya as like color-wise more a maybe red, orange or a very very bright pink whereas Frick would be to me more like a white pale blue, pale pink, something like that. Frick is more like motherhood and domestic life whereas Freya is just like self-confidence and standing up for yourself and being like a badass. Not to say that Frigg isn't a badass, but she's not as intense as Freya is. At least that is what I perceive her as. So I definitely see them as separate deities. But if you worship them as one and the same, I would be very, very interested in why and how you do that. If you just put all of their associations and their characteristics together into one deity. If you worship them as one and the same, put them in the comments because that would be very interesting to me. So yeah, let's get into my personal experience with, with Frick, which I already spoiled. It's not a lot because I have never had like a very close working relationship with Frick. I have maybe giving an, given an offering or two to her from time to time. But usually I don't worship her separately from all of the other gods. It's not like the relationship that I have with Freya or with Thor or with Odin, where I sometimes focus an offering only on them. I've never done that with Freik, so I basically only have like what I intuitively perceive from her. And yeah, as I said, I definitely see her as separate from, Fre from Freya and I would agree with all of these things that we know about Frigg. Like I definitely see her as maybe even a little bit older than Freya, being a little bit wiser and having more life experience. Maybe, maybe that is why she doesn't necessarily go about her day boasting about all of the things that she knows. I already went into like the colors that I associate with her. Um, I definitely associate her with like motherhood, domestic life, knowledge and wisdom, things like that. But that's only my intuitive impression. 
of what she and her energy feel like to me. As I said, I don't really have a close relationship to her, so I can't tell you a lot about her. So now let's move on to offerings. So when it comes to like food and drink, um, since Frick's card is drawn by rams, I feel like lamb or sheep meat would be a good offering when it comes to drinks. I mean mead works for any of the Norse gods and goddesses, but I always feel like some kind of fruit wine or something like that would also be great. Again, since her card is drawn by rams, ram statues maybe or since she is so often associated with herons maybe a heron feather or two if you can acquire one again her colors usually are like white and light blue i personally see all of the pastel colors as fitting for her so maybe candles in those color themes she's a lot of the times depicted with a key which i personally don't know any mythological reference to a key with Frick, but it makes sense definitely because it can be seen as the key to the home, to domestic life, which she rules over, and it can also be seen as the key to her hidden knowledge. So I feel like a key makes a lot of sense with her, so maybe a key would also be a good offering to Frick. And then lastly, when it comes to non-physical offerings, like devotional acts for her, Definitely learning fiber arts, especially weaving and spinning would be amazing. But um, I feel like any type of fiber art, because it was usually a woman's work <laughs> back in pre-Christian Scandinavia, any kind of fiber art would be amazing. Even if it's like cross stitch or embroidery or sewing or I don't know, crocheting, it doesn't matter. Like any kind of fiber art I think is great. And in general, anything that has to do with domestic life. So I feel like if you are like a close follower of Frick, then probably keep her altar space very, very clean and uh, keep your house very, very clean. I feel like cleaning and keeping your apartment or your house in order and uh, keeping everything nice and clean and organized, I feel like that is kind of a must do if you work closely with Frick, but feel free to disagree. I don't know. I heard that that's an offering that she requests a lot of the times, that she requests you to clean up. Now let's get into your juicy UPG. As always, I asked both on Instagram and on the community tab on YouTube, but let's first look at Instagram, shall we? <laughs> Ella, hi, Ella Harrison uh, left a comment um, and she said, not with Frick, but with, so she doesn't have any experience with Frick herself, but with Holle and a lot of people like me, for example, I also see Holle and Frick as very, very similar. So I don't know if they maybe had some kind of relationship, Germanic, figures are very very elusive to me so I, I see them as very very similar so um and it's both a mother and big sister energy tough love for sure too and i i can see that because i i personally wouldn't see frick as only motherly and only like giving and giving i would see her as someone who's still like stern and who knows what she wants you to do i guess that's also a similarity between freya and frick then we have, uh, Frick is all mother, she is like a warm hug, all knowing and kind, the more gentle version than Odin. I can see that, the more gentle version than Odin, because Odin with his wisdom is very intense and um, he doesn't really care about not talking about it and he would do anything to acquire knowledge and wisdom, whereas Frick, I feel like, receives the knowledge more naturally, she doesn't have to do too much to, to get that knowledge and that wisdom but she is more tactical about it, so I see that. I work with her when I use tarot. She loves fruit as an offering and I draw more cups cards when she is there. That's interesting, but I also kind of get it. <laughs> and the fruits info is very good. Uh, very motherly and warm, but also stern and not overprotective. There we have it again. A, a non-overprotective, but stern mom. Uh, I wanted to work with her, but she kindly told me that it was not meant to be. I'm sorry that happens sometimes, but again, she knows what she wants. 
Um, I found very good energy working with her. It felt like having a mother figure around good energy in your home. I see that definitely. She is kind but has a firm hand. My experience is that she wants to help but help you help yourself. I can, I can see that. Again, stern mom. She doesn't do everything for you. You have to work for it yourself, but she will help you do the work. Uh, I don't yet, but I plan to because I work with Father Odin. I do interact with her a little though. That's great. Yeah, I feel like it makes sense if you work with Odin to also work with Frick. I don't know what, why I don't. Um, and then we will move on to YouTube. Apparently, less people work with Frick than, for example, Odin, Freya, Loki, Thor. I definitely got less responses. So that's, that's interesting. Um, she's caring and compassionate, also extremely protective of children. I adore her. I see that. Frigg is the goddess I call on when I'm doing anything home-related. Cleaning, cooking and especially baking are all activities that I dedicate to Frigg. To me, Frigg has a very matronly energy. She has high standards but is supportive and helpful too. In the lore it says that Frigg knew as much as her husband Odin but chooses to keep her knowledge to herself. Actually, baking for Frigg sounds amazing. I don't know why but I feel like baking like pastries, like sweet things for her. That like intuitively clicks for me, I don't know why. Does Friege count? I guess, yeah, I guess. I will let it sli slide. <laughs> I have only been dedicated to her for a month, but had worked with her a couple of months beforehand. Let me tell you, she's definitely a very motherly figure to me. Her messages to me are very much, you can get over this hurdle and be okay. Also, love yourself and don't care what others think of you. She's been a light in my life. For the short period of time I've been worshipping slash working with her. She always delivers on her promises and has even helped me find a better job and gotten me away from a toxic one. That makes sense. I feel like this don't care what other people think of you is more the Freya aspect. But again, Frigge is kind of Frigg and Freya meshed together into one deity. So I guess that makes a lot of sense. I have recently, last few months, started working with Frick. I had an amazing reading done for me that was chillingly accurate. And long story short, she is definitely protective of children and I now call on her to help me decipher between what is my anxiety and what is my mother's instinct. I've picked up spinning with a spindle as another way to honor and connect with her and it's been wonderful. As a mother and homemaker, this, is, this just feels like a natural relationship and I don't know why I didn't feel her call or start working with her sooner. She and Hell are who I mainly work with now. That's wonderful and I feel like, by the way, I don't know why, but my eyes started tearing up, but only my left one. Um, <laughs> yeah, I feel like especially people with children and maybe stay-at-home moms or stay-at-home dads or stay-at-home parents in general would be like the perfect people to work with Frick. She's very similar to Saint Mary in my experience, very motherly, always has some wisdom for you, can be pretty stern sometimes though, like a mother. She has so much to teach about magic, it's very much household-based magic and as a seer, but very powerful. I definitely see that. Like, if Frigg would be a witch, she would be a hearth witch, definitely. So maybe, like, if you do a lot of hearth witchery, hearth magic, then Frigg would probably be an amazing goddess to call on for that. Looking into working, working with Freya, as she's been calling out to me more and more over the last one to two years, researching Freya often branches into researching Frigg, because so many academics believe they were once the same deity. Yeah, I have found that it feels right to me to think of them as two different stages or ages of the same goddess. Yeah, that definitely makes sense for me too. Like Freya has her focus of coming into your own, connecting with your power, sexuality, setting boundaries, etc. Which is topics you focus on as a teenager and a young adult. Whereas Frick has the motherly aspect, the homely aspect, which is what you would be focusing on as an established woman. And you become an established woman after you have come into your own aka Bin Freya. I'm still trying to figure it out, but it feels like this is the right approach to working with her, them, for me. Like Freya is the free, powerful woman who eventually becomes Frick, who knows who she is and therefore can focus on making her family, house, business, etc. work. That is definitely exactly what I feel like with Frick and Freya. That makes the most sense to me and I feel like you put that into perfect words. I couldn't explain it better. 
<laughs> she seems pretty popular, but not too popular. Yeah, that's right. She is pretty popular as like one of the goddesses, but she still worked with a lot less than Freya, for example. I've been working with Freak for about a year and a half, and even if I'm perhaps quite alone, I see her as a part of Freya. That is interesting. Like two sides of the same coin. To elaborate on that would be going too far here, so I recommend the videos about them by Arith Herga. In general, he has great videos, so go watch them. Which for me pretty much confirmed the experiences I had with her or them. I work with them both as one and separately. That's interesting. Interesting. Freak I find to be more motherly and more focused on the good of the community. I like to work with her on everything concerning my home and all its inhabitants, human and animal. But I also like to work with her on my own business because in Odin's absence she ends up running the whole place, not just the home. That's true. She doesn't seem to be so interested in material offerings, unlike Freya. Freya loves material offerings. Um, more in deeds, doing something for the household, the family, or even business. Time and energy seem to be the best offerings for her. For her, however, there are also some skeleton keys on my altar, which I also use now and then after a consultation with Frick in spells. That's great. And I think it's so interesting that you both work with them as one deity as well as separately. That is very, very fascinating to me. And that is all of the comments that I got. I think that's very interesting because the general direction seems to be that Frick and Freya are separate deities and Frick is definitely more like a stern mom who will like direct you in the right direction but not like do everything for you. But it's interesting that there were also comments by people who work with them as one. I think that's very fascinating. Again, that shows we are not all the same and we have different kinds of practices and that's totally fine. But yeah, I guess that is a good point to end on. As always, I will do a little patron shout out for my lovely patrons. Thank you so, so much to Segregated Facial Hair, Kent, Kelly, Lisa, Brittany, Emery, Celine, Smolkata, Josh, Virginie, Joseph, Elinura, David, Christine, Rixie Business, Valo, Annalena, Bast, Kirby, Ashley, Erica, Elantia, Anna, Kristen, John, Phoenix, Anton, Jenny, Maggie, Misty, Amy, Colette, Timothy, Coffee, the Honorary Gossip Squirrel, and last but not least, Bjorn. Thank you so, so much. As always, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and give a thumbs up and ring the bell down below so that you're notified whenever I upload a new video. You can also, of course, check out all of my other socials and my store for ethically and sustainably sourced witchcraft and paganism tools. And if you want to support me in another way, you can also check out my Patreon. And I will see you in the next video. Bye!